the Monday Night Preview here at Sparks Orthopedic Sports Medicine is Cedar Bluff, and I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves, starting with Coach, and then we'll kick it to Coach's right and back across to his left. All right. Alan Beckett, Cedar Bluff Tigers. Dawson Wheeler, right tackle, defensive tackle, go Tigers. Dylan Kennard, left tackle, uh, defensive end, go Tigers. Coach, um, take us back last week. I know last week was a pretty rough game for y'all. I mean, you was playing a uh, semifinalist last year in Spring Garden and a very, very tough opponent to play. But take us back to last week and what was your message to the team after the game? Uh, well, um, you know, our whole thing was uh, even even when you're playing up and you're playing somebody really good, you gotta you got to get something out of it, you know, and we got to continue to progress and it, it, you can't, you can't sit there and fool that one real long because uh, this one's big and, you know, and, and I've, I've cited Dawson over and over. You know, that was the first thing he told me. He was really sad after the first round loss that you got to put yourself in position if, if you dreams of playoffs that you're not sitting there as a, a two, three, or four, you know, a four that's traveling across state to have to play somebody. Um, you got to you got to flush it pretty fast. And the same would be if you were winning. You got to let it go. got to turn around. And got a toughie, a game at, um, you know, a, a really close loss last year in Valley Head, and they turned around and won the region. So, huge game for us. Absolutely. And you guys, um, heading into this week's game, let's go ahead and pick it up for this week's game. What are you guys seeing from them on film so far? They're in, they like, like their offensive line, they're one foot split, and we got a, they're just drive flocking their sled team. Like Coach says, they're going to drive you. No doubt about it. They're a run team for sure. They're not going to throw the ball much. We just got to hammer down on the line and get into them. They play a single wing. Uh, some yeah, of the five that was an eagle, and that's, yeah. uh, that's some Paul Betterfield stuff right there. <laughs> and, uh, Tim, Tim Murphy right there is where yeah. it came from in California. And, uh, foot to foot, they go a lot of uh, a lot of down blocks. Got down linebacker, and you know you got to fight that pressure, and then you know and then they're pulling the they pull the tackle instead of the guard. Which makes it a little bit different, and uh, and then their their sniffer is really a key on taking them to the ball. And uh, you got two guys that that are going to um, run it. They're going to run it a lot, you know. And then they uh, pack it in there with a with a four three. Charles Hammonds came back, came right before the season. He had been at Chattooga's head coach, been at Dade County. Um, we coached under same coach. He was at Henderson under uh, Patrick Nix. I think he's a really solid uh, coach. And he's a defensive guy. And then run the same things offense, which so I, I just I, I think he he helps them uh, even though he's coming that late. So they they'll be a really good football team, and it's a uh, it's a biggie, man. It's a biggie. Now, coach, both of these guys play both ways, correct? Yes, yes. So you know, know conditions gonna be everything in this game. It is, and we did we stopped. We had four quarters today where we stopped four different times and we ran. And uh, uh, Dawson Wheeler here is uh, up front, and um, yeah, he told me wrestle. So he said, "Hey, man." Coach, he said, I'm used to this. He said, when you go to conditioning, I'm used to it. And, uh, of course, I looked at his face a couple times, and I don't know. But, anyway, um, he, um, he he led us in uh, – he had the first week, he had seven pancakes, lettuce. Uh, Dylan had five. And, uh, and Dawson's going to be playing a lot of uh, defense this week. Dylan Kennard uh, has – you know, he's our tackle. And he has been uh, – man, he loves it. He was really upset. And he was our only guy that didn't come off the field last week, and he had to come off for the last play because he was cramping and uh, eat more bananas and uh, drink more. But anyway, he um, uh, that's an Iron Man when you're able to do that. I told him, man, we got to spell you just a little bit. But it tells you when you – guys like this, you don't want to get them off the field and uh, really does good. Uh, he's he's that hammer home uh, down blocker or, or pass set and got good feet, basketball guy. And, um, and you know, he's – a He's a defensive tackle, um, three technique for us, and gives people fits. So uh, both of them are um, really solid. He's a junior, Dawson's a senior, so um, they're really excited about the team. I'm excited to see what they do throughout the year. Yes, absolutely. Now for you guys, talk about that conditioning now. Let's hear it from your perspective. Coach said it's easy. Oh, it ain't too easy. <laughs> he took a job and he's doing co-op so we can get out a little bit of it during the school. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true story? I, I still run every day. Just got to stay in shape. Is it, was it worse than wrestling? No. Uh, I mean, but, but we need it. Oh. I mean, we need it. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no,
Too late, though, buddy. Coach, he said he'd turn it I swore I heard y'all go out there before a period when we're doing those four stations, but okay. We would. Right? <laughs> we would. But we complain a lot. We complain yeah. a lot. Hey, but as linemen, though, this is the, this is your safe haven week right here, buddy. Flat back and low and ready to fire off. This is this is man on man. That's it. Man on man. That's it. <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, you ain't got to look no further in the backfield or nowhere else. You're going to know who wins this game. Win or loss is going to be right there at the line of scrimmage. I mean, everybody's room to bring it's big boy football. We start we start practice and we circle a lot and we do one on ones and, and that's what it is. It's gonna be a whole game of the one on ones and, and banging. Even I love even. It. That's right. Even even even. Even. <laughs> now um what is y'all's mindset heading into this week right here? Because this is uh, this opens up region play for you. This is a big, very big game. Um, you know, that's our only region loss last year. And uh I'm hoping we get we beat them. I mean, we've had a whole year for it. Might as well. That's it. Same question. On what he touched on, it was our region loss last year. Kind of put us in the hole. I don't want to start out this season like that. I really want to beat him this year. That's right. We'll come back. And, Coach, yeah. final thoughts uh, heading into this, this week's game? Well, the keys are the same. They always are. you got to uh, you got to have more prolific plays than they do. Uh, you got to win the turnover battle. Uh, and you got to um, – you know, yards after contact, and, and uh, you got to do a good job tackling. So, um, you know, I think those things are – you got to be the physical football team against them. You know, you got to beat them at their game. That's right. No doubt. Well, good luck to you guys moving forward. I know this is a big one for you last year. Like the, I know you don't talk about revenge and your only loss in region play last year, but it definitely want to start out 1-0 oh, more than importantly than any kind of revenge of a loss or anything like that. So good luck to you guys. All right. Thank you. All right, we are in-house with the Coosa Christian Conquerors at Sports Orthopedic and Sports Medicine on our Monday Night Preview Show. We're going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves at this time, starting right here with Coach. Mark O'Brien. Ty Sims. Elon Mose. Teddy Whitmire. Coach O'Brien, take us back to last week. I know uh, you guys had a pretty impressive victory at Gaston, uh, 42 to, to nothing. Um, just take us back and give us an overall preview of that game last week. Uh, I mean, I thought we played hard. Uh, we're still making too many mistakes to be really good right now. Uh, but we're very young, as you know, Bo, and as long as we continue to play hard and improve every week, I think our look will be better and better every week. No doubt. Now, you got a couple of seniors right here with you. I'm just playing. we got an eighth grader and a ninth grader. Is that correct? That's correct. And they both are varsity players. They're varsity players. So um, when you see things like that, Coach, and how things are moving, Rapidly at Coosa, uh, having these two guys, and I mean, they've moved up into a leadership role. Uh, it's earned on the field, not you know on paper. What does that mean to you as a head coach? Uh, these two do everything you ask of them. You know, he doesn't act like a ninth grader, and he doesn't act like an eighth grader. Uh, and they do, I mean, everything that you could possibly ask. Uh, you know, and uh, they're only getting better. And he's, you know, he's got a. I think he's got a future in kicking, to be honest with you. Yeah, he can, <laughs> he can, he can kill one. it. Yeah, you know, and I don't know how big he's going to be, but, you know, um, and he, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to probably go into, you know, female modeling or something. That would be as tall as me, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> Coach Whitmire, uh, now you bragged about these two guys personally on the phone with myself. Uh, what is it about these two guys that stuck out to you with your background? Well, First of all, <clears throat> we're in there Saturday. Actually, Friday, Friday night. Saturday. It was Saturday. It was Saturday morning. Saturday morning, early yeah. Saturday morning. So the day after the game, uh, Saturday morning. This dude's an eighth grader. Saturday morning, he he's texting us and telling us, "Hey, coach, uh, Woodville guy does this, so and so, whatever number he does this. Hey, uh, I seen he does this. We need to do this. He, he's giving suggestions to us as an eighth grader. That's so awesome. that's awesome. You, you don't see that." You know, 11th and 12th graders, you don't see that. Right. And he's 8th grade, so he, he's a step above. And and this guy right here, he, he just does what you ask him to do. Man. Just the way it is. It's Plain and simple. Coachable. It's, it's coachable. No doubt. Now, Mr. Bye Bye Sims, uh, how exciting do you, does your dad get at games? Let's start right there, and then we'll move on. Sometimes I have to, like, ignore him. Cause he's <laughs> <laughs> trying to get my attention after, like, a good play or something. <laughs> He is like super excited. Dude, your dad's enthusiastic, man. Hey, that's good to have a father like that, though. I mean, modern day time, man. That dude really, really loves watching you play. But how fun is it? How fun was last Friday for each one of y'all? Let's start right here with Eli. It was fun. 
bad when I kicked it in the end zone and uh, playing both ways when Skaggs got hurt. Yeah, no doubt. Time. Now, um, so you stepped in in Skaggs' role when he got hurt? You, you stepped in and took his role? Yes, sir. So you got to play both ways the majority of the game? Uh, or until y'all got um, pulled out? I got you. Third and fourth quarter. Third and fourth quarter. All right. And, and, and um, from your perspective, I know you're all over the field as well. What was it like, this overall game? Yeah, was, it was a fun game. We came out, and we hit, flew around the field and all of that. Played play really good on defense and on the offensive side as well. Like, it was just fun to go out there and fly around and hit. No doubt. Coach, uh, talk about this week's opponent and what you've seen and um, preparation for this week's game. It's what, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's what we told these guys today. Um, Woodville, they're, you know, they're going to be physical, you know, just tough country boys, you know. But it's really not about the opponent with us, Bo. It's all about we're just trying to take care of us, right? And so uh, we just got to keep getting better at what we're doing because we start reading play this week. Uh, for us to make a you know shot at the playoffs, we've 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 got to start good, you know, no, no doubt. Uh, early. So, so that's what we're preaching to the kids is is just hey, you know, don't worry about who they are, scoreboard or anything, things such as that. Let's just go play, you know. Let's just be us, and that's what we're trying to do. Tell you from a defensive standpoint, um, what are some of the things you're looking to improve on this week? Well, I thought the first game was really good for us. I thought. Uh, we found some guys that didn't want to play, and we found guys that did want to play. And I thought we fought, we we've gotten even closer to finding um, our eleven that want to fly to the ball on defense. Um, uh, kickoffs the same way. Kickoffs, I, I'm looking for the same thing. Eleven people want to fly down the field and, and stay in their lane and, and get after the football. That's that's the main thing we've been focusing on. Just find eleven dudes on the field that want to get after it. If he kicks it into the end zone, it's a casher off his running. Deal. I was just going to say, if he you, right, you kick, you kick the, the, the first one in the end zone, yeah. start the game. Yeah. Freshman. Yeah. yeah. So if, now, if he'll start playing linebacker like he kicks, it'd be dangerous. One gasher off. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> one one gasher off. Yeah. Every, every now, time in the end zone. I'm, you know, Teddy makes the Well, he's got to kick him in the end zone and have yeah. 10 tackles a game. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's he's the deal. Good. Hey, like, you good with that? <laughs> His leg strips. You know, last of the season last year, he was he was kicking it to about the 17, 18 yard yeah. mark, and it's about a buck forty five, buck fifty last year. And I told uh, Coach Galloway, I said, I think he's going to be able to have the leg to put it in the end zone, and he did it for the first time last night, Friday night. And that's and a so, big deal. Yeah, and I think I think then the next year it'd be pretty consistent, yeah. end zone, which is a game changer. Oh, that's huge. Huge. Yeah. And he's placing it pretty well too because yeah. we I mean, we kick right and left. He's placing it too. Return guy, you yeah. get him a shot, man. That's, that's a huge. Like and Seven wasn't a scrub from Gaston. He's a good returner. He, he did was. a good job keeping him was uh, keeping him so, off kickoff returns. Yeah, so. Speaking of returns, let's talk about the return Ty had. Yeah. Yes. Let's you talk about that right? return, man. He's. I mean, he got hauled down. <laughs> 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 no, Coach, you got to look what he did to, to get hauled down. Well, he did, but he still got hauled. He ran yeah. about two hundred yards, Coach. Yes. <laughs> Ten gas. Yeah. That's why we ran five gas. Well, he's only running four. More than ten. More than ten. <laughs> Eli, how many are you going to be running after this week? Like two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if he performs like that, we can get some gas off the sky. Maybe, maybe so. No oh, doubt. So. From, from a player standpoint, this week getting ready for Wood Bowl, what's your, what's your approach? I mean, don't underestimate your opponent. Just gonna try. That's right. No doubt. Ty, same question. Uh, they're big, but... If if we play our roles on defense, we should be able to pull through. They're a very run heavy team with their running back being pretty big and all. So if everybody just plays their role, then we should be all right. Can y'all get Trey Woods to do anything, or, or is that a loss? We're, we're trying. We're trying our best. Yeah. See, we still want to play receiver. You don't want to hit nobody anymore. No yeah. yeah. Trey's want to play receiver too. <laughs> he wants. So I put him in one up. play. You throw a receiver. I threw to him. He you know, thinks he's a wide receiver. And now. it bounced off his shoulder. Back <laughs> <laughs> Funny story is, Coach, when we, when we showed up at JSU and was down there, and Coach was like, where in the world's Trey Woods? And he looks over there, and he's in the wide receivers running right out. <laughs> Never played wide receiver before. Coach said, what in the world's he doing? And he's down there from the JSU coaches running right Show the skills off. Uh, coach, final thoughts before we shut it down. Uh, you know, let's just see where the chips fall. Let's just keep playing hard and let these guys get, you know, older. Because every game, I mean, 
there's there's a lot of aging process, right? It Every be day. On the eighth grade team. Yeah, <laughs> he could be in the cheerleading squad too. So you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, so uh, but no, they're just going to keep getting older and older, and uh, and uh, let's just see what happens at the end of the year. I don't like to make predictions or anything like that. You just don't know. That's right. Yeah. Uh, one thing I predict is less gashers for moats. What shall I say? That'd be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to shut it down. I appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks, Thanks you, both. All right. We are here with uh, Sam Rock uh, on the Monday Night Preview Show at Sparks Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. We're going to let everyone introduce themselves, starting with Coach. Uh, I'm Alan Heath, head football coach at Sam Rock. Uh, I'm Brian East. I'm a senior. I'm a defensive end and right guard. Ace Ashley, and quarterback, and I'm a junior. Uh, hey, John, I play wide receiver, and I'm a senior. Coach, uh, let's go at you. Um, I want to know what your blood pressure level was <laughs> last Friday uh, during this shootout. If you can take us back to last Friday, was you at stroke level or? I'm lucky to be here today. I mean, that's <laughs> basically what I want to say. It was, um, I only broke one clipboard. Yeah, it was because of me. I don't think I don't think I said anything that would get me fired. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad of a night. I mean, but I mean, like, look, offense executed well. Offense played well. Um, but and the thing is, you know, I'm an offensive guy. Well, I'm an offensive guy too. But um, we um, we did well on offense. But we got you know we got to get to work playing complete football. We got to be fundamentally sound in all aspects of the game. And here's the thing. I mean, you know, I, I, we're small too. A school. We don't have a whole bunch of players. So they get tired and they start cramping up. Even the ones who, who work really hard start cramping up. And, you know, then that gets frustrating because you're putting in kids who may be out of position, that kind of thing. We ran into that in the second half and um, we uh, made some mistakes. And, you know, really, you know, uh, I told uh, Justin Bowen, a good friend of mine who's south side of D.C., he called me after the game. I said, look, if we play football mistake bingo, all right, and and there's this whole card. You don't have to just get the the, the row or the column. You got to get the whole card. I think we can get it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't even give you that square in the middle. You know, it's off. So oh, so they were doing like what could go wrong went wrong. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. But but on top of that, I'll say that we, that that is true. But offensive line is so much improved. We ran for nearly three hundred yards, and if you took out if you took out fumbles and penalties, um, then we'd have probably been closer to four hundred yards rushing. I mean, Man, and another hundred and fifty or sixty passing, something like that. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, they stacked the edges on us because last year we threw the ball up, we couldn't run. It, you know what I'm saying? Right. So they decided they were going to stop us from passing, running, sleeping, and getting outside. So uh, we ran counter and lead and got a bunch of yards. No doubt. Uh, from a player's perspective, we're going to pass it each one of you guys. Take us back to that game, man. It's such a, such an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, we at the beginning we thought, well, actually the first play, we came out there pretty hopped up, and I kicked it off, and they ran it back. Ooh. First hundred yards, yeah, yeah. hundred yards, hundred yards. Play first kick off. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Out. Hey, it still says twelve minutes on that clock, oh, and they're putting the score. Oh. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> That, that kind of set the tempo for them. They were hopped up, so we had to get our minds right. The first start. quarter took four, or 45 minutes. Yeah. And we ran the ball the whole time. How does that even happen? The first, the first, the first, the first, the first half. The first half. I don't know if they ran the ball or not. Uh, it, there was a lot of downs and ups to it. I mean, there, it was ridiculous. I mean, we'd have all the momentum in our favor, and then we'd lose it. I mean, just very quick. And... Yeah, just keeping mental toughness, that was a big key in there for us. Especially when your coaches aren't breaking clipboards yeah. and throwing some. Yeah. Yeah. That's third quarter. I want to touch on the clipboard thing in a minute but before I forget it. Go ahead and answer the question. Um, it was basically what what couldn't happen would happen. See, it, when we didn't need to turn the ball over, we would. Mm -hmm. It's just stuff like that that we need to fix. And I think we get that fixed. We play pretty sound football. Whenever the kickoff back, did you guys answer immediately or how that? Yes, we Yeah, we got there. I want to know that. Oh, no, it was. I was trying to get a play from him for one. Oh, you don't I was trying to hunt him down and get a play from him. Was it coach's message to you? We don't need to hear that. They can't repeat it. Yeah. Ball score short, we score. Yeah. There you go. First draft. There you go. Now, when y'all got on defense for the first time, what was that like? Um, we we did better. You know, the first quarter we were we were more sound. I think uh, we held them three and out. The first drive, the first drive, we we didn't let them score. 
And maybe one three and out, but I mean they, they maybe got one or two first down. But I, I think it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a penalty in that, so they got their own one first down. And, and so I mean, uh, it really what happened? It really was kind of an attrition thing because we just don't have any real depth when you know we have a kid cramp up or whatever else. Like I said, and it's not the younger kids' fault. They they don't get as many reps at practice. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and maybe they have to play out of position. And next thing you know, you know we're calling a coverage, and the kid's going, "What is that?" You know. That's right. Well, I just had the reps. Yeah, no. Yeah. So it uh, it ended up being uh, it wasn't pretty. But I'll, I'll say this: um, we fought back in such a way that uh, you know um, that showed character. It showed a winning character. That when you know every time it seemed like we would get to a place where we could put this away, we'd make a mistake, and they'd get back and and find And they come back with uh, what a minute and eighteen seconds left and scored the go ahead touchdown. And. I mean, they think so. And you know, what's what's great though is on the sideline there at the end, um, everybody said this is why we practice two minute drills every week, That's right. and we scored too fast. I gave them thirty seconds to go try and. They got oh no! Right I mean, we drove right down, just go bam, 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 touchdown. What was you think? I was like, gosh, I should have run the ball some. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, instead of said just pass it, you know. I mean, Owen Pruitt had some amazing receptions uh, during Sound that drive. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, look, just they were his force of will. To, you know, get either first down or get out of bounds and stop the clock. Um, I mean, uh, and Ace ran the wrong play, what I called t- uh, called oh, pass, no. and he ran in power read, but he ended up getting his first down, so it worked out okay. Um, and, uh, At least everybody ran power read, though. It wasn't just me. Yeah, okay. I thought we had a rebuttal here. I was going to hear that, so okay. Now, rewind the clock. Last year, that same type thing happened. He ran the wrong play, correct, which y'all – I mean, that was an amazing play. It was a miracle play. Yeah, yes. it, it became a waggle screen, which I've never seen before. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to put it on the play card. I don't know. But, uh, this is a true story. story. He showed me this. Right. Right. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. buddy, you got to see this. This is a true story. Tell them what. Uh, so I call uh, waggle left. All right, we're going to try and run the wheel off that side. I actually called this play. Uh, oh. You suggested the play. <laughs> I, you don't call <laughs> play. I call play. But anyway. So, uh, and that's, that's going to go to for years. I mean, you know, you, that, that waggle there is good. So, um, I mean, I think waggle is about the perfect football play if you execute it. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's executed. And so, we, we call waggle, and, and my my quarterback decides that rather run a waggle left, he's going to run waggle right while everybody else runs waggle left. And so, luckily, my running back, I could see my, my, my running back's like, where's Ace going? So, he stops and just turns around, and as, as the entire Cedar Bluff team comes to tackle Ace, he just jumps it. To uh, Ethan, well, and Ethan takes off score touchdown. Exactly. Well, yeah, that was it's a screen. Through, like, <laughs> waggle screen. Waggle screen. I think you need to put, get your new clipboard. Yep. That was my question about the clipboard. You know how these sailors got the guy that follows around water? Yeah. If you got a guy like you know, back back for a clipboard. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that kind of money at Sailor. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy with the back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it makes more than you lose it. That's like an airman. <laughs> it becomes so common they said that, that, that when I break one, I always stand there and look at it like, you know what? You know what's going to happen? He's going to get a slack bag and send a Smith Moore clip. Oh, he's got a farmer's insurance? Uh, that'd be awesome. I think that happens. So, uh, the thing that when I finally. When I finally realized, though, well, oh, I've broken this. It took a while. Oh, no. I, I like, threw it behind me, and they said all the managers ran and picked it up. So, <laughs> I guess I'm like a I guess I guess we'll my managers. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make that happen. That'd be awesome. Guys, I want a player's perspective on this. Coach is not listening to it. How nuclear did he go Friday night? Uh, this is him. He looks at his clipboard. Looks at it, looks up, looks at it again, snaps. Yeah, like, yeah. I no, want to no effort, no effort. It just looks like the clipboard just breaks from looking at it. He's just squeezing it, and then it just oh, falls. Like, right. like power, well, yeah, because so, okay. then I had to turn around and look at him and get the next play. And oh. I was scared to ask him like, what the next play was. <laughs> <laughs> but the clock's just running, and I'm like, I need a play. I need a play. I yeah, I'll, play. Sit, I'll sit over there cramping, and he comes over there, and the, he asked the trainer what's wrong. Fridays. And he said, uh, the trainer said I was cramping, and he squeezes his clipboard, and that was the start of it. And then he just <laughs> took off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, after the game, though, how, how awesome was it? Did the coach calm down? What was his message to you after the game? I, I think he was just happy that we had the win. He, he was happy for the moment. 
But, like, I don't think it quite hit them how bad we played. No doubt. So, but at the end of the day, though, you saw that you can't overhand a lot of adversity, too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it shows a lot of character on you guys to start the game off with an open kickoff running back, and then you bounce right back. And then it sounded like it was back and forth through the whole game. You guys we still actually out, picked up you know, a good lead. Like we picked up we a good streak. We picked up a good lead. And coming out of mm-hmm. halftime, I said to the trainer, because I, I started cramping the second quarter, and I was done. I don't run them enough. That's that's what it is. But um, we come out second half, and I, I told the trainer, I was like, we put this game away. We just need to drive down and score. We can't turn the ball over. We get down on the two-yard line, fumble the ball. Oh. Well, and, I mean, you know, I'll say this. Uh, our, my first year, I went to Coach Will at Montford, Coach Wagon at Montford. Um, we got beat in overtime by Alexander, which is the school I come from. I really wanted to beat them. You know, I was kind of, you know, I've been there. And I love the kids there and everything, the people there. But I just come from there and wanted to beat them. And uh, they beat us in overtime. I'll never forget the, the – Reporter at the Daily Home, his name was Levante. Levante comes up to, to Will and says, Well, coach, you'll be proud of the way your kids fall. So they never gave up. And Will said, I'm tired of never give up. I want winners. <laughs> and I'll say this, though, and he pretty awesome. And if I'll say that, that's kind of the way I felt Friday night. I mean, it wasn't a, oh, we gave a valiant effort, but we lost. We gave a valiant effort and we won. There you go. And there's a difference there. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Especially, man, you guys, like you talked, you and I talked about the season last year. And- any of that started creeping up in their head, but to fight through all of that, you know, get that done, that is huge, guys. Now, this week, man, you guys have got a very tough opponent again. Coach, what have you seen on from film? I mean, I watched them live in person with Coos, and they made me a believer. They, they remind me of last year's team. I mean, they're, they're big, and they're strong, and they're fast. And, uh, you know, they are they, – they don't really try and hide what they're going to do. They're basically saying, this is what I'm going to do. Come stop it. And, I mean, you know, they – and on both offense and defense. And uh, they're aggressive. Um we're going to have to have a good game plan. I think we're coming up on one. I hope so. Anyway, we'll see. Um, and uh, well, you know, I, and we're going to have to execute well, and not just in one aspect of the game. Last year, we executed extremely well on defense, and offense was anemic. All right, and then of course, you know, that was against Westbrook last year. This year, our offense played really well the other night, and it wasn't so much on the other aspects of the game. We got to put it all together this year if we're going to be a good Westbrook team. And, and that's huge towards, I mean, we're a tough region. You know, I mean, we got, Very tough. Uh, you know, Westbrook, Spring Garden, Very Cleveland, Locust Fork, West End, yeah, Gaston. Yeah. I mean, I mean we, we've got a tough region. And so, um, you know, and, and Westbrook's one of those that's right there expected to contend for the top of it. So, you know, it's a, that's that would be a, a good measuring stick for where we're at as a program, you know, beyond. You know, I know we've made improvements. We have. We're much improved. Strength, conditioning, despite how much we cramped the other night. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, our execution, what we're doing, and understanding of why we do what we do in football. But, I mean, that, that, that's a huge measure stick coming up for us Friday night. No doubt. From a player standpoint, I mean, what is your mindset heading into this Westbrook game? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'm going to watch more film. I wasn't as prepared coming into Pisgah. Uh, they got up some – Pretty big guys like on the line yeah. and their D line. Their O line's pretty big too, so just gonna watch for that. Number 15, number 8 are college quality players. I promise you. It's like you said, watch more film, try to pick up on habits. I mean, you you can learn by just watching a player over and over what, what you're gonna do, uh, how they do certain things, like how they line up and stuff, and just try to figure out some habits. No doubt. I think we just, we just need to execute and do everything. As we're coached, I think we'll be all right. 100%. Yeah. That'd be a good game, man. That Carmichael Cat was another handful, but it, you guys better sign up football with that cat. And that, like you said, he don't make no mystery. He's, he's going to line up and hide and they're going to run it at you. Period. That's it. Imagine my mean. Well, whichever back gets the ball, it's hard to bring down. That's right. Both of them. Yeah. yeah. Coach, I appreciate you coming in. It's always a good time to have yeah, these guys in. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Uh, good luck to you guys uh, this Friday night and moving forward in the season. Right, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Our next team is Spring Garden, and I'm going to let these two gentlemen introduce themselves at this time. I'm Zach Kerr. Andrew Floyd. Guys, um, good to have you guys in. This is y'all's first time visiting this here, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Good time. Good, good deal. I know Coach Howard come week one, but I'm talking about you two guys individually. Yes, sir. All right. Um, appreciate, appreciate you guys making the trip up. I know on Mondays it's not always easy to get out. And, um, you guys usually stay pretty busy out there, so I appreciate you making the trip. Guys, last week, man, you had a very impressive victory uh, over Cedar Bluff, and um, they had a new offensive coordinator that came in from Florida. I don't know how much film you guys got to watch on them, if any, if y'all had any actual good game footage of those guys, but 
take us back to last week because you guys actually pitched a shutout against those guys and got a 40 to nothing victory. Do you, both of you guys play both ways? Just uh, me. I play offense only. Okay, just you. Okay. Take us back to last week defensively, and then we're talking about offense next. But what did you guys see out of them? We just saw guard takes wherever the ball is. We knew our keys, so we just did it. No okay. doubt. Now, offensively, you both can pick up on this, and we'll start right over here. What did y'all see from their defense that y'all try to take advantage of? That 4-4 four, four defense, cover three. Yeah. They'd usually have an outside linebacker stacked to the outside. We knew we could run up the middle. Gotcha. No doubt. I mean, well, they had some great defensive ends. I mean, we tried to run at their number three, the Burt kid. I mean, it was their best defensive end. I mean, we tried to run it at him most of the night, so. He's used a pretty physical play. Yeah, yeah. He, he was their best defensive end. And our coach knew we was going to run it at him since last Monday. So, I mean, he's physical. So, oh, I mean. Now, um, after the game, what was your, what was uh, Coach Howard Coach Howard's message to you guys? Because I know he don't want you thinking that you've already got it all figured out, and y'all still got to go back to work. Because I mean, you got to get you guys got to get into uh, region play coming up. But what was his message to you uh, after that game? Stay top dog. That's right. We're the champion. No, no. Hey, y'all, you guys have a, a workout regimen that not many people do. I've, I've come out of and watched you guys work out. For those who ain't never been there, seen what you guys do, um, girls and boys, it's pretty special. Explain to that everybody on camera what, what that weight room regiment looks like for people who's never been there and seen it. It's pretty intense. You better catch your breath while you can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't much of a break, is it? Not at all. And y'all got it up there on that chart on that chart board up there by the TV screen or whatever. Y'all have it on the TV screen. We have it on the TV screen. That's right. Because yeah. we have our uh, the the most powerful players uh, and for girls chart. and boys on a chart, so they get honored for the most lift they do. So. And I seen on the TV screen and everything's timed too as well. Oh yeah, we got three three and a half minutes on each station. We do stations on Wednesdays, and the other days we do 80 to 90 percent on Max House on, on all of our stuff. So, I mean, it's pretty intense. Well, I like about it. You guys got like Coach Rat and Coach Howard. They all work together out there. Talk about that and how all the coaches at, at Spring Gardens Bronx brought into this program or fall into the program. Um, well, they all work together with every workout we do, and make sure they keep us conditioned as well as healthy. No doubt. As what he said, I mean, they come together. I mean, every Sunday, all of our football coaches get together and go over our weekly routine of practice. I mean, when we're in that weight room, they're all in there keeping us on the same track to pushing ourselves even harder to get better for throughout the season, conditioning-wise. Yeah. And um, if we was to shut this video down right now and go out there to the basketball court and you two guys took on Ace and Neely, I think I could beat them to them too. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, my kid. Yeah. By myself. By yourself? By myself. You can be an ace and neither. Well. We might have an exhibition here. Boys <laughs> doing fouls. Nearly wouldn't hit a free throw. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Shaq, I'm going to be honest. Well, you know, uh, uh, neither, neither can shoot the three. Hey, uh, so we got Kyle Neely out on the free throw shooting, so that's hilarious. I ain't got the moves to keep up with neither one of them, so I ain't even going to step on a court with it. That's all. Right. I love it. I'll be honest, man. I watched Ace drop 28 on, on uh, his guys. I was like, nope, I won't none of that. No, sir. I'm out. So I, this game coming up against West End, this is a new look West End team, different mentality, um, actually real run heavy with Jeremiah Robinson. Talk about, um, have you guys ever watched film on them yet? Yes, sir. What have y'all seen from them so far? The running back's pretty physical. Yeah. And the, their, their receivers can run some pretty crisp routes. We actually had their receiver in the running back in today. <laughs> I mean, I watched some of the, the film today. I didn't get to watch much of it, but when I had free time, I did. They run the same cover as Cedar Bluff did, 4-4 four, four, cover three most of the night. And, I mean, I feel like we're going to be able to move the ball on them. I mean, their defensive backs might – might get some pressure more than Cedar Bluff did, but when I watched them against Plain View the other night, I mean, they moved the ball in Plain View, but I mean, it's just going to be a tough one for us to go up there and we're going to have to play our game at our eight. Yeah, it's it's at uh, West End. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a little bit different environment up there. There's been a lot of changes in that stadium, or not the stadium per se, but the, the field house, the weight room, the film study room, it, it's a different mentality up there. 
But I mean, this is a not, I mean, coming off last season, you guys made it all the way to the semis. Mm-hmm. What did that do for your confidence heading into this season? You made it shoot up for me. <laughs> no doubt. As of what said, I mean, as of what he against Marcel last season, I just kind of made me want to push myself to be better for this season, being it's my senior year. I want to push myself to be a better person, a better team leader, to be where we can push further than we made it last year. So I'm hoping it's a successful season for a spring guard. It's so. a very unique situation because a lot of people that's not around your program or don't know you guys from inside, they think everybody graduated last year. What they don't mm-hmm. realize is y'all got, what, 13 seniors this year? We got the – we didn't lose none of the linemen. We got that's the same right. offense and defense and linemen, wow. and we lost – we didn't lose no lineman last year, so right. we got the same ones coming back. So, I mean, people don't realize they think that everybody graduated. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, don't get me wrong, Luke and, and Riley, I mean, those are those are dudes. You know yes. what I'm mean? saying? But y'all have plenty, plenty, plenty here now. Yeah, to replace them. I mean, who was yeah. that Pope that had the the hurdle running? Chaz Pope. Chaz Pope, our yeah. quarterback. Dude, what happened on that? That dude turned into Superman. Did he plan on that or did he? No, he planned on it. Did he? No. Does he do that at practice? No. Uh, they won't let us do none of that. Okay. okay. He does it every year. He does it? He done it last year in playoffs. I think it was against uh, North Sand Mountain. Man, he jumped over like that. He hurdled somebody last year like that. Yeah. Does, he, does he high jumper from the school or anything? Where, where is this coming from? He can jump. He's, He's got jumping. hops for days. Yeah. Who's got more hops, him or, or, or uh, Cooper? I'd give it to Chaz. Thanks, I'd, I'd give it to Chaz. I like it. Like you guys got any questions? Look forward to seeing how this turns out. I know you guys uh, watched a little bit of you last year, and uh, man, I know that you you guys have, have uh, y'all stack this year. You're probably one of the most physical teams I got to watch last year. Smaller school, you know, and uh, man, you guys played like a big time school. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this year turns out for you guys. I'm, I'm thinking big, big things for you guys for sure. Especially the senior leadership this time. That's I sure y'all were. Y'all had some seniors that were leaders, but now you have a senior leadership thing. I mean, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you guys do. And I mean, this is region play. I mean, it starts Friday. First step to winning the championship, winning the region. Exactly. So how 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 is it, that mindset dialed in on this? Man, we, we're here. We are region play already. We we know we want to win it. Yeah, this will be three years in a row. No, yeah, if y'all do, don't pull it off. Now, I don't uh, think that's the only mindset they have. It's not yeah. beating the region, it's winning the region. It's winning. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I read somewhere, was that the first time y'all beat Cedar Bluff in back to back games? Yes. yes. And I, I, think, I, was like, I think it was like 20 years. Yeah. At, yeah. Our, at our field. And it's the first time we beat them at our field. First time we beat them at our field. And first time y'all beat them at Chelsea Field in, in a long time. Long first time y'all beat them in back to back games in forever, or ever, or something like that. That's like ever. That's crazy, man, to think that. Well, now, Cedar Bluffs had dudes over the years. I mean, they they were physical two years ago. I mean, last year, they lost a lot of their seniors. Yeah. Corey T was one of their best defensive linemen they had and yeah. they had over there. And once they lost that senior group, I mean, they they gonna be, I mean, young young, young guys gonna step up. So, no I mean, they stepped up, but I mean, they got a lot to accomplish throughout this season. So, yeah, no doubt, man. I appreciate you guys making the trip up again. And, Thank you so much, and uh, good luck to you guys moving forward. Thanks, Zach. All right, we are in-house here at Sparks Orthopedic and Sports Medicine with two very special young men from the West End Patriots. I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves at this time. I'm Isaiah Robertson. I'm Thad Pierce. All right, guys, um, take us back to last week. You guys had a very impressive win versus uh, Pleasant Valley on the road, um, 39-14. Seems like you guys started clicking offensively a little bit in that game, and, and I'm sure it felt like it. Uh, we'll start right here with Mr. Robinson. Um, talk, take us back to last week in the 39-14 victory over Pleasant Valley. Um, I just knew we were going to run the ball a lot, so I just got the ball and ran as hard as I could. <laughs> Simple enough. That's, <laughs> hey, that's, <laughs> my, that's <laughs> what Forrest Gump did. He made the only thing throw me down. <laughs> Mr. Pierce? Everybody was doing their job pretty well, and we executed plays pretty well. So. Now, what has Coach Sewell's message been to you guys since he got there, since he first arrived and first talked to you guys? What was his first message? We'll get it from both of you. We'll start over here, Mr. Pierce. Well, basically he came in, he said, we're going to work hard. We're going to work out every day and get to school on time. So, I mean, he's, <clears throat> he's really just made us dedicate to football, and I like that. Hey, he ain't no joke. No-nonsense coach. Yes, sir. Very good. 
Same question. Basically what he said. Has he uh, individualized you? Because, I mean, I know you was going to be an intricate part of this running tag, which is what y'all are changing to from a basically throwing type offense. Yes, sir. What has he said to you individually about that, about your role? Um, just to try to be a leader of the team and That's right. lead them. Do you do that then? I try. You do good. <laughs> That's right. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Y'all said his vision coming true when, when you know, he told me, one of the first things he told me in his interview was he was looking to upgrade facilities and stuff. And so I see the wraps in your in your in your film room. I see your door wraps. Um, he's changed the whole look of, of your field house. I mean, your weight room's completely different. Um, it looks like new state of the art. Everything he's got put in there in this short of time. I mean, the man's only been out there a few months. What does that mean to you individually? We'll start right here. I mean, the community's behind us for sure. That's where most of our money come from. That's so. Right. Yeah, it feels really good for them to support us. No doubt. Yeah, like he said, I mean, we couldn't have done it without any of the donations from parents and the community. And he's been doing that since the day he got there, so. That's right. I think it's kind of the perfect storm type deal. Mm -hmm. I think the community, you know, kind of ready to jump out there and help the guys out. And, and no better time when you get a new coach to have a new look. So, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's got to, um, have seen, have making all those improvements, I know, for y'all personally, that's got to be, it's got to be a feeling, you know, a good feeling for you. It makes you want to come work even harder. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, you got anything, though? Um, you guys opened up uh, region play this week against Spring Garden, very tough team, went to semifinals last year. Um, what have you seen uh, from those guys on film so far, getting up, you know, getting ready for this week? Well, they're, they're going to be a tough team once again, like they were last year. And we're going to watch a lot of films, see how we can counter their plays and and <clears throat> try to stop them on defense, get as many stops as we can and try to bring it home. Why well, he said? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I asked this question earlier to the guys looking at him. Do you guys play on offense and defense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what positions do you play on defense? I'm a receiver and cornerback. I'm running back and middle linebacker. Running back and middle linebacker? Yes, sir. All right. So, both you guys are playing in the shadows of your brothers. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, hey, but now, for real, how many times y'all hear the glory, what's the word, glory day stories? Glory days. Y'all yeah. yeah. still hear that? Or no, they quiet that day? All the time. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. But both of y'all, I mean, both of y'all's guys, both of your guys' brothers were great athletes, but both of you guys are as well. And it's, it's kind of funny to see the average Joe's has been here long enough to see the brothers. brothers. See the brothers. The brothers. Well, you know, like, yeah. my experience, because I'm, I'm a little older than you guys, uh, usually the little brother's the, the stud. So, <laughs> you know, y'all can claim that right now. Who's the better athlete, you or your brother? I mean, it's, it's probably us. No sure. doubt, right? Yeah. There you go. Put that on camera. Oh, yeah. Take it to the bank. If we did a tag team wrestling event. Who would, who would walk out of there? No, I know I'd win. We'd win for yeah, sure. We'd win. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Are y'all Xbox or PS4 guys? PS4. Uh, PS5, actually. Right? Xbox. Do you think y'all would smoke them? Yes. Video game tournament? Yes, sir. What could these guys beat y'all at? Probably not. Well, that's oh, like oh, a lot of uh, Eli's hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he does have hair. He's got hair. You don't get into that one. No, I don't. You don't care. It's like, we'll roll with this. Late, who who can get more ladies? You guys or next? It's not a toss up. I'm going back to pool. You did. <laughs> 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 he didn't. No doubt. Man. Well, man, I, hey guys, I, good luck to you guys. I know Coach Ryan and that that that'll be a measuring stick. Spring Garden is as good as that. I mean, the two A team around here. Yeah, I think. I mean, it took Morris Hill to finally put them out. I mean, yeah. last year. Yeah. And now this year, you know, believe it or not, you'd think that their team was gone from last year, but. I think they got 13 seniors. Yeah, uh, two so they may be better than they were last year. Yeah. But, hey, these guys are ready to battle, but they they are. right now. They I'll watch these guys work out. They they get after it, man. That's going to be an interesting game. You guys have it at home? Yes, sir. Yep. That's going to be huge for you. First home game. First home game. Oh, so the wow. Angie's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was just that yes. first home game. That is right. Y'all were on the road last week. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you guys. Move forward. And, um, hey, give everything you got, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, our next team is the Collinsville Panthers on our Monday night preview. I'm going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves at this time. Junior, Jordan Coker, defense in and center. Um, sophomore, Eli Griggs, receiver and outside linebacker. Guys, 
Take us back to last week. I mean, you played a, a rivalry game with Crossville. I mean, that used to be the rivalry years ago, and then you kind of lost touch, and then you kind of rekindled it. Um, I remember all the teams that we follow heavily. I watched score updates, and I remember standing on the sideline looking at. I was at Aniston. I was at, actually I had left the Aniston. I had game with the Piedmont Cherokee County game. Watching the update, just hitting refresh, refresh, and I seen y'all pop up twenty one twenty, and I was like. <laughs> Take us back to last week. What, what all transpired in that game? Well, uh, we started out, uh, we scored on the first drive of the game to 7 0. And then we stopped them, and we almost scored again, but there was a holding penalty, so that set us back. They scored, didn't get the extra point, and then we drove all the way down the field again, had another holding penalty. And then they blocked the field goal and took it all the way back. So we went into halftime down 12 7. So uh, the second half went smooth for us. Uh, we scored, had them down 14-12, and then uh, that's when we got went to lot in the league. So we had to sit in the locker room, I think, for an hour, hour and a half, and then we came back out. They scored, and with about five minutes left on the clock, we uh, went back down the field, and uh, Colton Wills caught about, a I think, a 35-yard uh, pass on fourth and ten. Over, uh, over a cornerback, and uh, Keaton ran it in for a touchdown with about a minute left and won the game. Keaton's like a fine line. He's just steady. Yeah. He gets better as the game goes on, don't he? Oh, yeah. And he's a ladies' man. We oh, yeah. Uh, from your perspective, how was it? Well, we just, we just tried to fight. We tried to finish up in the game, and we ended up doing that. No doubt. I mean, that, that had to be a huge, huge boost in mentality and, and – Enthusiasm for you guys to pull that one out like you did. I mean, how, how, how did y'all feel after the game? What was that locker room? Well, it was more of a relief feeling. I got you. Uh, you know, we, we thought that we should have been ahead a lot more and then that we sh- basically screwed up a bunch until the end of the game. And it was just felt good to put that last drive together to win it. No doubt. Uh, everybody was excited, just having a great time. No doubt. Now, this week, y'all are playing. Five at five, and I know that's. Uh, we talked about this with Teddy. I talked about this with Teddy last week, Teddy Hounds, and, and um, that's always a tough game, but it's always a fun game. And, and, and Collins was one of those teams that don't back down from five. They actually welcome playing them. So uh, talk about that game over the years and what it's been like for you guys. And you know, I remember nineteen. That's some of the best football I've ever seen. It was number twenty-five. Absolutely. Yeah. Great yeah. times. You know, great team players on both sides. What's that rivalry been like? I mean, I know you all got a lot of respect for them as they do y'all. Uh, we, we really, really respect Pop and what they stand for and their coaches and players, you know. I just – we always have fun playing them, and, and it's always a physical game and with a bunch of action. So I just look forward to it. That's right. Yeah, I just – I look forward to the hit because I know they're, they're going to hit you. They're going to hit you. They're, hit you. <laughs> they're going for that. Yeah. They just can't back down. But now, what what is what was Coach's message to you guys, Coach Winningham, after that game? You know, like you said, it was a relief to get out of there with that win, but what was his message to you guys after that game last week? Uh, it was more of a, we've improved a lot from last week to this week, and it was, we've got to keep improving because to beat Pop, we're going to have to play 10 times better than we did against Crossway. He's just, his message was just keep improving every week. That's right. Just get better every day. No doubt. Uh, I got one more question for you guys. Heading into this week, I mean, what is going to be y'all's main focus game plan wise? Because uh, I know y'all seen film on five. Y'all got to see probably the Marshall and Isabella games. Um, is there anything you guys seen? I mean, what, what is y'all's mentality about coming into this week? What did uh, the coach talk to you about? Obviously, from a lineman's point of view, it's you know they they have a couple good linemen, Tucker Wilkes and Fifty Seven. I don't really know his name, but Jay, Wood- Jay Wooden. Wooden. Yeah, that's his name. But I mean, they're they're real good. Real good players, and he's got to be low, physical. That's that's just fine. He's got to be low. From a lineman standpoint, though, you probably like playing. Oh yeah, I mean that. <laughs> I mean, that's the best football you'll play. That's all year. That's the they're the best line I'll play all year, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. That's right. Coach, he just wanted us to play the football and get to the ball fast and that's tackle. Right. Yeah, because this is still. I mean, believe it or not, this is a relatively young five team. I mean, they're still really experienced, and so. Um, I can't wait. We're actually, I know I'm coming down. I'm in the other average Joes. We'll probably be two or three other ones here. But 
we're gonna go eat at Shine, some barbecue up there, and, and come enjoy that game with you guys. So good luck to you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next guest on the Sparks Orthopedics hotline is going to be B Man from Fife, Alabama, the number one Fife fan in the land, I dare say. And there's a lot of them out there, but I think this guy has the crown. Nobody else has the tattoo to prove it. If I'm wrong, somebody else can step up and uh, prove me wrong on that. B Man, how are you, brother? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing really well, man. Um, I know Fife had an off week this last week, so we can't really break down the game or the game last week, and that's fine. But they are playing a rival in Collinsville uh, coming up, who did come from behind victory, did have a come from behind victory versus Crossville um, this last week, and they won twenty-one twenty. Gut wrenching game, actually. I talked to Teddy Hounds and Coach Hounds. Uh, Good friend of mine. I talked to Teddy pretty regularly, actually. But Coach Ham said that uh, they didn't perform too well, but they got the job done, and he was happy with that. And he also said that, you know, it hadn't come from behind, so they faced some adversity. And they, all, and they got the old uh, the old gunslinger coach back over there, uh, uh, Coach Willingham. Um, uh, B-Man, yes. you know all about him. Talk about Coach Willingham and, and some of that rivalry over the years. Oh, uh, Coach Willingham, nothing but respect for him and his program over there, you know, for years. It's always a rivalry, but it's one of them, you know, when the game was over, you shook your hand and just had respect for them and, you, could, you know, hang up with them and talk to them. But during the game, it was a battle and a war, but after the game, you know, you had nothing respect for him. He does an outstanding job, and I know he's got a young team this year, I think maybe four or five seniors. Yeah, very so, young. You know, they're going to be one of them teams I think will get better each week. We think go in and you'll review the film and uh, correct the mistakes. And looks like they made a you know a lot of improvement from the first game to this game. So I expect the same. But uh, yeah, Coach Willingham, Coach Hams, the uh, first class, you know, over there at Collins, you know, you, you're going to have a battle to face those guys. Yeah, man, he has them ready to play. And, and be honest with you, big man, and I dare say this, the Collins was one of the teams that don't fear five. You know what I'm saying? A lot of teams are from what Coach Benefield's built up there, some of these teams, I mean, I hate dare to say this, but some of these teams seem like they're they are beat before they get out on the field. But Collins was one of those teams that, that that battled with Fife. You know, I remember those games in 19, some of the best football I've ever seen played in North Alabama. They, they always come in, you know, they always seem relaxed, lose, ready to go. They don't, they don't seem up tight. Like some of the teams we play, they go up tight, first, you know, we're just ready to go. But Avalanche just came to man and, it's a ball game. These guys always come in, you know, lose, bring it, go. You know, they're, they're confident. They they trust their training and their coach with them, and they're coming in with a game plan that they trust, and they just come in, you know, ready ready to battle. B man, they have one of the most beautiful backdrops in all of high school over there at Collinsville. Unfortunately, we won't get to see it. <laughs> they're going to be playing at five this time, but but man, B man, you've been over there a hundred times, I'm sure. For oh, those yeah. who haven't never been there, talk about that mountain that that frames up that stadium over there. Yeah, you look over there from uh, behind the visitor's bleachers, you look over there and you, you just see a uh, lookout mount over there. Just the, especially this time of the year, you know, the trees are starting to turn a little bit, and you, especially later in the year. We used to play with different times, but real beautiful then. You can start seeing all the different colors and all that. Man, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. A, that little area down there in Congo, it's just a, you know, it's a close-knit community, kind of, you know, like fire. Yes. You get behind the, their bunch, and that's just a, that's one of the better settings around here for a high school game. But fortunately for us, we get Paul Benefield Stadium. Yeah, a little <laughs> different environment. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, it's beautiful we're, in its own right, though. Uh, yeah, not, not, a, not a bad little view up there. I, I love, I love um, the layout behind the stadium where the practice field is and the hill. And then, um, of course, the walking players, track. The players love that hill, bro. Oh, yeah. We got to see a little bit of that over the summer, didn't we? Yes. Yes, players love the hey, B man, we got to see them run down it and then backpedal up it. You remember? Yes. <laughs> one by yeah, one. That's a, that's a lot of fun to uh, run down there and you think it is. I wonder how much that like, man, this is a pretty good pace. It's several hundred uh, yards in one way. Yeah, you're several hundred yards to get, you know. <laughs> I dare say it's well over 100 yards to get there and then go down it and then back up it. I mean, you, you, you probably got I, 300 yards in the deal or better. I'd hate to be in the dead of summer. You've had about 
show up. You have to run down and backpedal back up. Well, uh, up the hill. But that, that's why them guys are luckily, on the corner, but still the the first. Luckily, Coach Benefield don't make his players run. He just lets them sit around and relax. <laughs> they, they get to sit on their helmet and just watch practice if they don't feel like practicing. Around ice water. That's right. They got them nice cold ice water and a cooling town. They get to sit on their helmet out there, big man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, so let's let's talk about this game a little bit. So you've seen yes. you've seen them over the summer practicing, and you and I sat there and watched them multiple times. And then we seen them in Mars Hill, and then they always say you get the best improvements from week one to week two, which what was what we would have seen or what you have seen firsthand at Isabella. And I got to see it on film. And I got to watch a lot of the film with Coach, and that was really interesting. Really, really interesting. You watch third and fourth level of stuff that you wouldn't catch with a naked eye or even know what it is unless Coach Benefield's sitting beside you pointing it out. Oh, yeah. So, with that being said, you've seen the improvements and you've seen where their short shortcomings were. What is your overall general view of this game coming up? We're going to have to play a silent football. We're going to have to establish a line of scrimmage on both sides. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to name their, I think, an athletic quarterback. He's going to be throwing his leg over with his arm. That's right. So we're going to have to keep contained on him. But one of the things I've seen from us between Mars Hill and Isabella, we had a better pass run against Isabella against a, a big physical line. Our defensive backs, Mars Hill burned us twice for two long passes. Our secondary improved greatly against Isabella. We didn't give up that long, long pass to them. That's right. They kind of hit us, you know, some intermediate stuff. But I didn't see improvement. Our secondary young. We don't have one returning starter back there. We don't have any many anywhere. But <laughs> then we got two. We got two freshmen back there. But they improved greatly just from the Mars Hill to the Isabella as far as their coverage. I was, I was really pleased with how much they improved in that. And I think that they'll just get better each and every week. You know what, though, B-Man? They don't, I don't think Isabella had the deep threat that Mars still had, but their quarterback was very, very good. Yeah, yeah. he was very athletic. He couldn't, I mean, he could, he could avoid you. If you didn't have anybody blocking up there, he was hard to get to just how mobile he was. It's hard to get him around. on the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, the guy you're speaking of is Keaton DeBoer. He is a very – very special athlete, tremendous athlete. And, you know, I watched him work out a lot. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I watched him when they played Pleasant Valley up here, and that joker had two touchdowns of over 50 yards in the first quarter, I believe. It may, The other one may have been early second quarter, but it was just what you just got through saying, which was gap assignment. On both plays, somebody missed, you know, an assignment. And with this cat right here, you blink, and he's gone. So – they got to play sound football. You're right. And that's tough to do with a very young team like Coach has. He's dangerous. He's scrambling around back there, you know. Can't, no matter how you're sick of it, he's a king cover forever. So if he's back there scrambling around, somebody, you know, gets off the route, cuts his shoulder, he scrambles in front of you. You always got to, you know, you know, be aware of that right there. He, he can make something happen when there doesn't look like there's anything there. A la he's Landon Green. What's his name? Landon Green, Sunshine? Yes. North yes. Sand. Yeah, that's what his that's that was his yeah. MO. <laughs> Buddy, you gotta you had to get to that guy and you had to get him on the ground because he would create time and he would let people get open, man. That guy was special, wouldn't he? Oh, just what a guy just gives you fits all week, you know, working with somebody like you. Would you like the game plan for a guy like that? Oh gosh, no. You know, you had the best plan in the world. That's right. Play breaks down, I mean that's Almost things you like some time when the play broke down. He, he could improvise. And oh, yeah. He could find somebody. That guy, he was, he was something else now. He was good, man. He was really good. And then, you know, Caleb Jones was another one. Not, you know. Oh, oh dude, he was a nightmare. And, and um, hey, i tell you how good he is. The guy's at JSU right now, and he's running second team running back, and he come, he come in there as a walk-on. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that one being. He, he, he's beat four he or five that. guys out with scholarships in front of him. He, he was just, he was smart. He was strong. He could beat you know with his arm, his legs. I mean, his, his mind. He was just a, the kind of guy you want on your team right there. He played numerous positions for you. That's right. 
great, great kid, great attitude, and a great family yes. upbringing. Um, one other thing, uh, B man, uh, before before I get you off the phone, uh, have you got to eat at Shines yet this week? Or are you going to do that pregame meal or what? Oh yeah, I've never get Shines. <laughs> Once, maybe twice this week, probably. There we go. <laughs> he's coming up with his little restaurant. There. Dude, when he so, gets that thing done, could you imagine what he's going to look like on Friday nights? Oh my God, that'll be the spot to go right there. Dude, he's already over. I mean, the guy he don't he don't close. He runs out of food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't say I'm gonna close at this time. We'll be there until we run out. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and dude, it happens every time. It happens every time, every day. And the thing about that is, that, I mean. That shows you what kind of product that guy's got, and I love that guy. You know, we're talking about Ike Ridgeway, obviously, people in Fife. We're talking about Shines Barbecue. He's building a brick and mortar right there in front of his, right by the stadium. I mean, you can't miss it. It's, it's where the caution light is right there at, at Fife, and and he's got a, a temporary trailer. He's 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 cooking right there uh, out of, and, and he sells out every day. Am I right, big man? Oh, every day. I, I've known Ike and his family, you know, forever. Great family comes from you know, his mom and dad, his brother. I know them. Forever. I've always told people it doesn't get any better than a Friday night football game at Paul Benville Stadium in Iraq to Shine Dreams. Oh my God, yes. You're correct, buddy. And that's just the tops. You are correct, buddy, and I agree with you. Red Devil football and Red Devil win. That's it. <laughs> my God, B Man, could, if you died one Friday when all that happened, you'd die a happy man, wouldn't you, B Man? Oh, I'd die smiling. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> Well, B-Man, I'm going to tell you this right now. I know me and about two or three other Joes is going to be at that one this week, buddy, so we will see you there. Awesome. That sounds great. Looking B- forward to it. Looking forward to it, B-Man. I will see you Friday, buddy, and I appreciate you joining us. All right. Good to hear from you guys. Thank you, buddy. See you soon.